Well, here we go with lesson 34. This is the first of three lessons uh, that's going to cover section 4.5, rational functions. Well, what's a rational function? Well, here's one, 2x squared plus 7x minus 15 over x squared minus 2x minus 8. That's a rational function. And what are we going to do? We're going to sketch them. And if you look, I've got a vertical asymptotes in here. I should have put the horizontal asymptote in. We'll get to that later. And we graph it. What's in red is actually the graph of the function. What's in blue there is the, um, the, in this case, the vertical asymptotes. We'll be talking about vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and all those things. But this is basically what a rational function is. So let's first talk about vertical asymptotes, and then we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes. All right, the line x equals something is a vertical asymptote if the function approaches infinity or negative infinity as x gets closer and closer and closer to that value of a. And that's either from the left or the right. You remember this from the tangent function. Remember we had, t we had vertical asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2. And the function would approach infinity or approach negative infinity as it got closer to that vertical line. So here's just some function I made up. So we have two vertical asymptotes in this one. x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. And what's in red is the graph of the function. And you can see the graph heads up to infinity as it gets closer or goes down. And that's generally what we're talking about. Those are vertical asymptotes. And in general, we're talking about division by zero errors. We cannot divide by zero. Now, horizontal asymptotes, as these are the lines y equals something. Uh, the line is y equals something is a horizontal asymptote if the function approaches that value as x heads out to the right or as he x heads out to the left, infinity and negative infinity. And here I have a line y equals 1 is my horizontal asymptote. And look, as, we, as, the pay, as the graph enters the page from the left, it's hugging that line. It's a little bit above. As we leave to the right, it's hugging that line a little bit below. Now in the middle, we can cross, we can cross horizontal asymptotes. They're not sacred around the y-axis. They are sacred at the extremes, uh, infinity and negative infinity. You will not cross a horizontal asymptote out there. Now vertical asymptotes, those are sacred. You never cross a vertical asymptote. Now here's the theorem on horizontal asymptotes, and people just hate this. I, I, I would agree with you on that. But there are only three cases of horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote will either be the x-axis, y equals 0, it will either, or it'll be the ratio of the lead coefficients, that a and the e, or there won't be any. Let's use, let's use examples to, to go through this, but I want to concentrate on one thing first. I want to concentrate on that, those lead terms. As long as you draw, write your numerator and denominator in decreasing uh, degrees, we only concern ourselves with the lead terms, x to the n and x to the k. Those are the only two things we can we compare. Look at 1, 2, and 3. They only look at n and k and how they're related to each other. So that's the only thing we're going to zero in on. Well, here's case number 1. Uh, in case number 1, you see we've got 6x minus 1 and 3x squared plus 4x minus 3. I only worry about the 6x and 3x squared. x squared is huge compared to x when x goes to infinity or negative infinity. So x squared, the denominator, is going to take over this function. And as x goes to a billion or a negative a billion, x squared is going to get huge compared uh, to x. And therefore, the denominator is going to get huge. And in any fraction, when the denominator gets much, much, much bigger than the numerator, the value of the function is 0. So in the cases where the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, then the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0, the x-axis. That's case number 1. Well, here's case number 2. We have 6x squared and 3x squared. We have a tie. So x squared and x squared are going to go up together. Again, when x is at a billion or a billion billion, the 7x, the minus 5x, the 1, and the 2 become insignificant. So we're only concentrating on the lead terms there. We have a tie, so we go to the tiebreaker. 6 divided by 3 is 2. As x goes to infinity, as y goes to negative, as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, this function will, be clo will get closer and closer and closer to the line y equal 2. That's case number 2, the tiebreaker. They're tied. Take the ratio of the coefficients of the lead terms. And for our last case, here's a case I got 6x squared and I got 3x. The numerator is going to get huge compared to the denominator. In this case, there is no horizontal asymptote. I mean, there's no limit to this function. As x gets bigger, this thing's going to get huge. As x gets smaller, this thing's going to get, well, huge again. Well, actually smaller because x will be negative. So there is no horizontal asymptote when the numerator has a greater degree than the denominator. And so here's your review. Again, we only con concern ourselves with the lead terms. In both the numerator and denominator, we only concern ourselves with n and k, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, and there are only three cases of horizontal asymptotes, uh, either the x-axis, 
the ratio of the two coefficients, in this case a and e, or there is no horizontal asymptote. But let's use some examples to, to, to drive this home. So in each of these examples, we're going to give you a function, f of x equals, and then we're going to ask for some basics uh, in order to kind of frame this out and rough it out. We're going to ask for the horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote, and then the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts are just easy points to find, and they're just kind of nice to get. And then we're going to sketch it. That's all we're going to do. So here's our first function, f of x equal to x minus 3 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Uh, horizontal asymptote. First thing we look at are the lead terms, x on the top, x squared on the bottom. Notice that 2 is bigger than 1, and I'm talking about exponents here, x squared on the denominator and x to the first in the numerator. So this is that first case uh, on horizontal asymptote. And before we get to horizontal asymptote, uh, let's go ahead and factor the denominator, just get it out of the way. Uh, we, we're always going to give you trinomials that are factorable. So this is x minus 3 over x plus 3, x minus 1. And when we go to look at the horizontal asymptote, though, I'm going to go back to that original function. I'm not going to go to what I've just done there in blue. And as I said before, this is the first example, or uh, the first case of horizontal asymptote. As x goes to infinity, the denominator is going to get huge compared to the numerator. So our horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0. It will be the x-axis. Our vertical asymptotes are the values of x that x can't be, or we'll have a division by zero error. So that'll be x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Again, we're looking to the denominator. And if you let x be negative 3 or 1, we're going to have division by zero. We can't have that. Those become our vertical asymptotes. X-intercept. This is where it crosses the x-axis. And this is where y equals 0, where the function is equal to 0. It's a fraction. The only way to make the function equal to 0, to make the fraction equal to 0, is to find a value of x that makes the numerator 0. And look up top. The only value that makes the numerator 0 is 3. So 3 comma 0 will be our x-intercept. And now the y-intercept. This is the easiest point. I don't care what math class you ever take. If you ever have to graph a function, find the y-intercept. Put 0 in for x into the original function before we um, factor the denominator. Put 0 in for x. Look what happens. 0, 0, 0. You get negative 3 on top, negative 3 on the bottom. Then you end up with 1. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. The y-intercept is so easy to find. Just put 0 in for x. Whatever's left over is it. Now, there can only be one y-intercept if there is one. You can't have two y-intercepts because it wouldn't be a function any longer. However, you don't always have a y-intercept. If the y-axis is a vertical asymptote, we won't have one. Not a big deal. All right, let's put all this together. In order to frame it out, uh, we see that we have a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, y equals 0. We have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. We have an x-intercept at 3, 0, and we have a y-intercept at 0, 1. So I, I, I just put the basics in there, and now I'm going to draw some lines and see if I can figure out what this graph looks like. So let's start with the first region, that region uh, before x equal negative 3. And I'm not really sure what's going on here. Now, we have to be hugging the horizontal asymptote as we enter the picture from the left. And as we approach that line, x equals negative 3, we either go down to negative infinity or up to infinity. And so if you look in the upper right hand of this uh, right hand corner here, I put in what's called a sign chart. I really don't want to plug a bunch of values in and get a perfect graph, but I'm going to put negative 10 in. You can pick any value you want left of negative 3. And you can see there, I'm trying to show division, but it wouldn't make any difference. If I put negative 10 in, I look at those three terms, x minus 3, x plus 3, and x minus 1. If I put negative 10 in, I get negative, negative, and negative. And three negatives make a negative. So I know this thing is going to be below the x-axis as it approaches from the left, and it's going to go down to negative infinity as it approaches negative 3. And if you're not sure, plug values in, but I'm just using a sign chart. Now, the middle region, there's not much going on here. Uh, we don't have any x-axis crossings here. I have to get to that point, 0, 1. So it's some kind of parabolic thing in there. I, I, we would have to use calculus to get the actual turning point down there, and I don't want to get that technical into it. And it's not a perfect-looking parabola, so just draw it in there. But I'll tell you what, we're not crossing the x-axis in here. We have the only x-axis crossing out there at 3, 0. And for the last region, um, I use the sign chart again, and I put in... Um, 2, because I want to see, is this thing above or below the x-axis between uh, 1 and 3? And if you put 2 in, you get 2 minus 3, which is negative. And then the other two terms are both positive. So negative, positive, positive gives us a negative. And then I put a number there to the right, 10. Anything to the right of 3 would work. And positive, positive, positive. So that means I'm coming up from 
the uh, I'm coming up from the bottom. I cross over, and then it turns at some point, and we're not going to find that point. It turns at some point and spends the rest of its life going back down. This is a rough sketch. That's all I'm looking for. And then we might ask you domain and range and where it's increasing, where it's decreasing. I'm just going to ask domain here. Uh, the domain are the possible values of x, and you just have to jump over all the division by zero uh, problems. Uh, so negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 1, and 1 to infinity. We could also ask you for the range, but that's a little difficult here because I'm not really sure uh, where it's where those relative max or mins are at that I don't want to get into. We could also ask you when it's increasing and when it's decreasing, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's try another example. 4x over 2x plus 3, and you can see there we're going to do the same list of, of uh, steps. Well, there's nothing to factor here. Uh, find the horizontal asymptote. Well, it's tied. We got x to the first on top and x to the first on bottom. So we go to, this is that second case for horizontal asymptotes. We go to the tiebreaker. y is equal to 4 over 2, which is 2. So this will approach the line y equal 2 as it enters the page from the left, and it will be approaching the line y equal 2 as it exits the page to the right. Next up, I set the denominator equal to 0 because I want to find out what value of x can I ha do I have to avoid. Subtract by 3, divide by 2, and so x cannot be negative 3 halves, therefore x equals negative 3 halves is our vertical asymptote. Well, how about x-intercepts? Is there a value of x that would make the numerator 0? And sure enough, there is. You put 0 in for x, 4 times 0 is 0. There you go. So 0, 0 happens to be our... Um, x-intercept, and it's going to double for us here in a second. And what I mean by doubles for us, um, if you put 0 in for x, you get 0 again. So I mean, the x-intercept is the origin, then you've got a y-intercept has to be the origin as well. All right, so we know uh, we got some things we can frame out here, and then we're going to sketch it out. So I put in the uh, horizontal asymptote at y equal 2. I put in the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3 halves, and I dot in the origin. And you know what? I'm pretty much done here. We have found the only place we're going to cross the x-axis, and we're not at the point yet where we're going to start crossing the horizontal asymptote, although that's perfectly legal. We're just not there yet. So let's take a look at what there's really only one possibility for this for this function. So let's look at the first region, and again I use a sign chart at the upper right hand corner there. Pick a value less than negative three halves. I picked negative five. If I put that in there, the sign chart, eh, it's not really a sign chart, is it? Because the sign chart tells me if I'm above or below the x-axis. I actually plugged negative 5 in here, and I found out that the whole thing is above that line y equal 2. But I could have predicted that. Because had I come in the page hugging that thing below, hugging that horizontal asymptote from below, I would have had to go down as I approached that vertical asymptote. We had no x-axis crossings in that region. I couldn't go down. I had to be above heading up. But again, don't trust me. Plug values in and find out for sure. And I went ahead and put negative 1 and 5 in there and calculated it out. But again, what other option did I have? I had to come from the bottom, go through the origin, and as again, as I leave the page, I have to be hugging that horizontal asymptote. If I had come from the top down, I would have had to cross that horizontal asymptote, which is allowed. I would have hit the origin and then ricochet back up, and that just doesn't happen. But again, just don't take any chances. Plug some values in see what you get. Well, now that we have it sketched, let's look at the domain. Well, the domain would be uh, negative infinity to negative 3 halves, united with negative 3 halves to infinity. Notice we have parentheses there. The range of the possible values of y, and we can we can do this one. Look, negative infinity to 2, and 2 to infinity. We just jump over the 2 there. Now, when's it increasing? Well, it's increasing for the entire domain. And so you would just duplicate your domain. Look, the thing's always going up. As you go from left to right, it's going up. And then it jumps over the, horror, the vertical asymptote, and then it's heading up. It turns out it's not decreasing at all. At no point is this actually going down. So there's a little extra that we toss in. All right, here's our next one. x squared minus x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 12. I'm going to factor all this first before I dig into it. And we notice we have x minus 2, x plus 1 over x minus 4, x plus 3. Nothing canceled out. Uh, but now my vertical asymptotes are a little easier to find. However, for my horizontal asymptote and for my y-intercept, I'm going to go back to the original function before I factored it out. Well, here's another example where we have a tie. We have x squared and x squared. So it's the go to the tiebreaker, and our horizontal asymptote will be y equals 1 over 1, the ratio of their coefficients, which, which is 1. So we're going to put a line in there uh, going from left to right at y equal 1. 
And for the vertical asymptote, we look down to the denominator and we see that we cannot allow x to be 4 or negative 3. So we'll put in those vertical lines at x equals negative x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. For the x-intercept, you want the numerator to be 0. Are there any values of x that turns the numerator into 0, which turns the whole function equal to 0? And look, we have two of them. When x is 2 or x is negative 1, we get a 0 up top. And when you get a 0 in the numerator, the whole function is 0 and you cross the x-axis. And the easiest point in the world to find, put 0 in for x in the original function before we factored it. 0, 0, minus 2, 0, 0, minus 12, and negative 2 divided by negative 12 is a positive 1, 6. So we have our y-intercept at 0, comma, 1, 6. All right, so let's frame it out. I put a, a line going from right from left to right there at y equal 1. There's our horizontal. I put in two vertical asymptotes at 4 and negative 3. And I want to show you there, I, I squeezed in that 0, comma, 1, 6. It's, it's somewhere there. Just kind of guess at it. Eh, it's below a half, you know. So I got that in. Let's sketch the graph. Well, again, the first region is rather easy because I'm not going to cross the x-axis. If I was hugging this line below, I'd have to go down as I got to that line x, uh, x equals negative 3. So I must be above. And again, don't trust me. Plug some values in if you want to. But I'm telling you, that's the only option for region 1. And I don't think there's too many options for region 2. I mean, we've got to go through the two x-intercepts. We've got to go through the y-intercept. And I, I've got a kind of a rough line here. I, I don't know exactly what this thing does, but eh, it's close enough. But I don't think we came from the top and then ricocheted around. I, it, this is the only option. But again, you can plug negative 2 in. You can plug 3 in. You can prove it to yourself. And the last region. And again, if we were coming from the bottom up, we would have to cross the x-axis to get to that horizontal asymptote as we leave the page. And we have no x-axis crossings in that third region. So we had to be coming from the top, heading down, and um, heading out toward. And as again, as you leave the page, you got to be hugging that horizontal asymptote. I think that looks pretty good to me. And I'm not going to talk too much about domain and range and when it's increasing and decreasing here. Uh, yeah, the domain would be, just skip over those vertical asymptotes. Uh, it's increasing, but again, it's hard to tell. And decreasing, uh, it's hard to tell when it starts to go down. And also, the range is tough because I'm not really sure where, how you know, the relative max and mins and all that. So let's just move on. All right, next up, 4 over x minus 2 squared. Now, this is unique because there's no x value up in the numerator. Hmm, what am I going to do? Well, we have degree 2 on the bottom and degree 0 up top. So, yeah, this thing is really going to go uh, to 0 in a hurry. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, the x-axis. And we can't let x be 2 or we'll have a division by 0 error. So our only vertical asymptote is x equals 2. And what value of x would make the numerator 0? There is no variable in the numerator. The numerator will always be 4. Therefore, there is no x-intercept. We will not cross the x-axis. There is no value of x that would turn this numerator into 0. Therefore, you never cross. This function will never be equal to 0. It will never cross the x-axis. So, just, just no x-intercept. All right, y-intercept. We want x to be 0. So, you put 0 in for x. And if you do that, you end up with 4 over the quantity negative 4 squared, which is actually positive 4, so you end up with 1. So our y-intercept will be 0, 1. Now we're ready to frame it out and sketch it. Well, I don't have a whole lot to go on here. Um, I do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That's the x-axis. I do have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And I have 1.01. 1 .01. That's all I got. That might be enough. We're not ever going to cross the x-axis. If we never cross the x-axis, I think I got this figured out. Well, the only way I can be hugging that horizontal asymptote uh, as I enter the page from the left and go through the point zero 0,1 is if I'm above it. And then I cross there the y-axis at zero 0,1. And then I have to be heading up to infinity as I approach that vertical asymptote. There's really no other option. For the region to the right of x equals 2, I, I just use a, uh, a um, sign chart. I pick any value to the right of uh, x equal 2, so I let x equal 5, for instance. And if I put that in there, the numerator is always positive, And look what happens. The denominator is always positive. So this function is always positive. It's impossible to get 0. It's impossible to get a negative value for it. And so we end up with the, with the function to the right of x equal 2 just heading down. Came came from the north. And then again, as it exits the page to the right, it has to be hugging that horizontal asymptote. So our domain would be negative infinity to 2, and then 2 to infinity. 
our range is zero to infinity. Uh, and in parentheses there, because it's never zero. And it heads all the way up to infinity. The function is increasing. As you go from left to right, the function is heading up from negative infinity to two. And it's decreasing as you go uh, from, again, left to right. It starts decreasing as you cross over the two on its way to infinity. I will say this. If you add up the increasing and decreasing, it has to, it has to equal your entire domain. The function is either going up or it's going down. You only have two choices there. And we use the little union thing there, the big U to combine them. Parentheses mean it can't be equal to it. Ah, you've seen it before. Well, I think we've beat this subject up as much as we can. This concludes Lesson 34. Uh, get to work on the homework.